is there when you put Jesus first. Because remember what, what the, uh, Jesus said. When I go away, I'm going to send him, and he's going to speak of me. He's going to declare me. He's going to show, take that which is mine, meaning of him, because he doesn't have things. Oh, look, I got a new watch, you know, stopwatch or something. You know, I don't, you know, um, but rather um, when we focus too long on ourselves, we can get depressed or dull. Sometimes I think being depressed is better than dull. Because you can stay dull for a long time. You, when you get depressed, you want out after a while. At least you're going, I'm drowning. You know, I, was, uh, I said that to somebody, a Christian brother is passing by, and, and, uh, and I, hey, hey, and I finally came over, and I said, I wasn't waving, I'm drowning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see, where did we start? With Matthew 22, let's go back to that. Matthew. And uh, verse 38. Let's, let's just, um, verse 36, Master, which is the great commandment? Okay, which is the great commandment? Which is the great commandment to you? Which is the big, big statement to you, Jesus? Okay, because that's what they're kind of doing. They're feeling there and they're trying to find out because, well, we believe this and, you know, what, what would you call the great commandment? What is the biggest big deal of the whole thing? <clears throat> and Jesus said, for you to love me, not me to love you. Because I mean, he didn't say the biggest deal is that I love you. Now, I know, think about it, let it roll in your head. I know there's a lot of negative things that can react to that. Well, he does love me. Well, I didn't say he didn't. I just said that's not the great thing that he brought up. <laughs> you know? Stop whining. <clears throat> Y'all seen my bumper sticker. It says, stop global whining. <clears throat> anyway, so, so I find it interesting that the, this great thing, this what's the top thing? What fulfills all of the law and all of the prophets <clears throat> that you that you will love me that you will love me with all your heart and with all your soul with all your mind with all your strength all right <clears throat> so um, I, I'm just like I threw that out, and I know that there's still probably scriptures or something running through your mind, and you go, oh, that ain't right, or what? <laughs> um, let me give you a worse one. Worse than even that one, all right? Um, instead of relying on his love for you, I know this is, this is going to mess with you. It's what I do. <laughs> it's what I do. <clears throat> Instead of relying on his love for you, learn to rest, to, to learn to find stability in your love for him. Okay, because he's the one who said that's the great commandment and this is the big deal that I would like to see and it'll fulfill all scripture. Love me, not I love you. Okay. Now we know that we love because he first loved us, but he still didn't make that the emphasis of that. He could have. He could have said that you, you know, 
<clears throat> that I love you and that I'm going to die for you and that's the greatest thing and da 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 da. But let's just think about it, if nothing else. Let's just think about that of, of a relationship where um, one person in that marriage or one person in that relationship is always coming up and saying, do you love me? 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 Do you still love me? Will you love me tomorrow? Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's, but that's what Christians do. It's, it's about his love. I got to know that he loves me. I got to find out he loves me. I got to have this assurance that God loves me. You know, somebody goes through a hard time and you go, well, there's nothing I can do about it to help you, brother or sister. There's nothing I can do. But, you know, God loves you. And, you know, I remember when I was young and somebody did that to me and I was going through something. But God loves you. I was thinking, well, where's, where's proof of that? Because you go through things that when God still loves you, and the question isn't, does God love you? Is the, the question is, am I going to still just love him no matter what I go through? Wouldn't that kind of be sort of like a, what someone would consider a good marriage? Yes. <laughs> you know, it would be, you know, um, you know, if, if, if my wife ever said this to me, this is hypothetical, I love you through sickness or in health, for better or for worse. I remember when we got married, she said, for better, for worse, and I said, "Well, it just got worse." You said, "I do," <laughs> but you know, if, if if someone said something like, "I will always love you," I don't care how things go. I don't care uh, how bad it gets. Because in, in a marriage, there are, you, you go through, and I don't just mean rough patches necessarily between husband and wife, just bad stuff that's enough to rock your boat and can affect your marriage, for sure. Can affect your marriage, even though it's, it's not necessarily relational, uh, relationally um, the issue. But... Jesus is kind of saying, this would be great. <laughs> the great commandment. <laughs> this would be great. <laughs> this would really mean a lot to me. <laughs> if, if I, like, went away, you know, and you didn't see me a lot, because he did, by the way. And you were down here and you'd go through something. And you'd, it'd be a mess and a wreck and all this wild, crazy stuff going on. That if I just saw you look up to me and say, but never forget, I love you with all my heart and with all my soul and with all my mind and with all my strength. I love you. So this is this, but this is this. And for those of you who are just listening to the cassette, or, I mean the CD or whatever, this is this means this is what's going on down here. But there's something else going on, and that's what's going on between me and the Lord. And that never changes. And he doesn't have to tell me all the time that he loves me. And I shouldn't have to have the assurance of you having to tell me all the time that you love me. For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son. So are you at least following my weird, weird way of thinking? <clears throat> and, uh, I, and I will tell you that I, I come to this thinking by always trying to consider his heart first instead of mine or ours. Because this is, we're still earth. He's not. He's still above and we're beneath, you know. Um, John the Baptist went through all that. You know, I'm not even worthy to untie his shoe latches. He was before me. He's greater than me. And that's all that counts to me. Okay. Well, then John the Baptist nailed it. Because he, when they asked him who he was, he didn't say, I'm John the Baptist. I'm the forerunner of the Messiah. Don't you know who I am? He said, he didn't answer. He said, well, are you, are you that forerunner? Are you Elijah? Which, who was, you know, supposedly that forerunner in that sense. And uh, no, and da, 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 da. Well, who are you? I am proud to say that I am the voice of him. Him. I'm not him. I'm the signpost. He's the destination. <laughs> you know? You know. Well, what about that? Yeah, I know. You know? And if that if that spirit is in you, and that spirit was in John the Baptist, because, you know, I mean that's what he came to do, was to declare Jesus. That's what was important, was Jesus. And we talk about memorial ministry, but that's what it is in a nutshell. It is more concern about his desires than ours. It is more concern. It, it would think of some weird thought like, maybe, he, maybe what would be great to him would be me loving him instead of me sitting here going <laughs> like a wilted flower and go, tell me you love me, you know, or send somebody along that says, Jesus loves you, but don't worry. Or, or if I really sinned, you know, I really did something terrible. I just sinned bad. I guess all sin is bad, but anyway, if you just, you know. <laughs> you know, and I did that. And then, you know, you know, it's like, don't, don't worry, brother. He loves you. Well, maybe the reason why you did what you did is because you didn't love him first. Okay, you know, just get the rocks out, bring the bag with the, I'd prefer tomatoes, but if you're going to throw, you know. You know, maybe, maybe the problem is that we don't obey the first commandment. And I don't mean commandment, commandment, Old Testament. I'm talking about the spirit of that, the nature that we described in the last class. Um, so that if that's working in me, then he's first. I remember counseling with a brother and you know, I was talking to him sort of along these lines, and he said, well, you know, you know, I, I he said, he looked at me and said, you know, brother, no, um, I think he called me pastor, I don't remember, you, you know, brother, Jesus is very prominent in my life. And I said, Colossians says that in all things he would have the preeminence, not just be prominent in your life, that he would have the preeminence in all things. You know, people who either love me or hate me. Some love to hate me. Very few hate to love me. That's not right. <laughs> Similar situation. We were talking about the government of Christ by his nature. The government that Christ governed by his nature instead of by commandments, outward, externals. That he, or by heaven, by sitting on a throne in heaven going, hey, 
Don't do that. But rather his life, his spirit, his nature being able to overcome my life, my spirit, my nature. And, and I remember talking to someone once about that, that you, what you need is to be governed by the nature of Christ, not just saved. And, um, and I said, you know, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, the government of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And he said, well, I'm seeking the kingdom of God. And I said, are you seeking it first? <laughs> you know, I mean, yes, it's true. I know how to irritate people. Unless you really want the Lord. If you really want the Lord, I'll tell you what, it'll cut to the bone, but it'll, you know, this, the, there's many scriptures that talk about, you know, um, in his mercy, he hath afflicted me. Hallelujah. In his mercy, Amen. you know, because sometimes we do get hold of. Sometimes we do get dull. Can we admit it? All of us, sometimes we get dull. And sometimes the best thing we could have is if we're talking to someone that we care about or they care about us in the conversation and, you know, and they're really dull or stuff like that. And then, and I don't, I'm not saying do this actually. I'm using this as an example. And then all of a sudden just reach up and bam, slap them. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you know, that was different. Most people wouldn't do that. <laughs> I ain't most people. Um, the idea, the, the spiritual meaning behind that is to do something, say something that rattles your cage to make you go to think or to act or to pray or to believe or to step out on the wall or something that will move you from dullness. Something, something. And if, you know, well, Jesus loves you, doesn't work. <laughs> well, am I, come on. Am, am I getting through on that? I mean, if just patting somebody and saying, well, don't worry, Jesus loves you. That's not the cure-all. Jesus thinks it's nice, but it isn't great. <laughs> We're still on the theme here. <laughs> what he would like is for you to love him through thick and thin, through ups and downs, and to just be in love. I mean, anybody here, honestly, anybody here ever really been in love? Raise your hand. Never mind. <clears throat> and I'm not talking about with self, <laughs> which, which wipes out this side of the room. But anyway. <laughs> But you know, if you're if if you're really in love, even if it's even if it's like, you know, puppy love or whatever, you you think about the person all the time. You care about them. You see them when they're not there. You oh, he, you know, he walks like I, my guy walks, or you know, some stupid thing. You know, who knows what love can do? But that's not even agape love. You see. But when you love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all, then all of a sudden, the things where you needed a pat or you needed uh, to, someone to love you in your self-justifying or in your failures because you refuse to love him, don't justify him. Don't say it's okay to be that way. Say, you need Jesus and we need Jesus and I'm with you. Let's go after Jesus. Let's love him. Let's seek the Lord with all of our heart. You know, I have a, I have a bumper sticker on uh, one of my guitar. I've got a lot of bumper stickers on a lot of guitar cases, but I have one of them that says... Um, Lindsay, help me with this one. It's the one that says, um, no, no, it's the one that says, uh, uh, everything's going to be okay. And then in parentheses, it says, not really. <laughs> 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 um, that's kind of me in a certain sense in that 
It's not if we don't go after the Lord. It, it's not going to end well. <laughs> there has to be a rising, not of leaven, but a rising of the Spirit of God because, see, you know, I mean, he's the, he's the Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Spirit. He's the one who will get you to Jesus. And, and you know, I mean, I, I love leading worship and all of that stuff, but worship in itself won't get it. And even though, even if it's spirit-led worship, I mean, we can understand that. And a lot of things can happen during worship. But there is nothing like the Holy Spirit getting us in the Word or, or breaking us down. You know, anybody ever been driving in your car and the Spirit of God hits you and you just break and pull over beside and just go, Oh, my God, I just want Jesus. And then, I mean, I've done it so many times. You know, some, uh, there was a time period I went through that I thought, I'm never going to get anywhere. You know, because I'd, I'd constantly <laughs> pull him beside the road. <laughs> Are you okay, son? I just want Jesus. I'm out of here, you know. <clears throat> and the, there, is, there is no magic in touching someone's shoulder and saying Jesus loves you. But there is something almost magical, but it's spiritual and it's of the Lord. When... Two hearts meet together over the Lord, and it's real, yes. you know, and it's, it sparks a flame, it sparks a flame, and he's in that flame because that's, that may be the fulfillment of the sweet incense that's rising. You might literally be fulfilling the altar of incense. We did it. <laughs> We've come... <laughs> We've come full circle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes you're the fire and sometimes you're the coals that need being lit. But we need to, we need to release those who had the fire when we're just coals. Amen. Let them, let them rip. Because they're going to they're gonna set something that will last and that will flame up. And more importantly, that combination the fire and the, the coals or the incense will bless the Father with the Son instead of just encouraging um, the term I always use, instead of just encouraging the ills of carnal Christianity. Did you already show me a zero? Was that it? You, you cheat and squaw. <laughs> She goes, I forgot, and she's got this big ring on, and I'm going, I, I don't know how to read that, you know. There's no sign. It's just a big, that's, you know, that's just. The, yeah. Well, there is, there is, you know, the Spirit of God really was held back and didn't come until after the cross. You know what I mean? I mean, he came, he came after the cross, and that's what he wanted to declare was Christ and him crucified. He doesn't want to give words that encourage you in the flesh. That's right. I mean, really? Yeah. He doesn't. Yes. That would be so uh, defiling to him because he came to lift up Jesus. Mm -hmm. So you just fling open the doors for him to lift up Jesus, and stuff starts happening. And I know this is true. And here's the deal. Back to this, then we'll try to end here. If, if, if it's not to you, if it's not about, you know, does he love me? And, oh, just tell me God loves me. If it's not about that, but it's about loving him, then he can light you pretty quick. <laughs> he can. He can light you up pretty quick. And... And all of us have that love for Jesus. See, that's, that's not a problem, especially in this place, amen? We love Jesus. That is not a problem. But sometimes it's hard to get it lit. Right. And, if, and if we stay dull too long, then you look around, everybody's dull. Right. <laughs> you know, hey, praise you, Jesus. <laughs> you know? 
And the Lord's going, just shut up. Yeah. Just look. You're in no condition. <laughs> just try. Here's all I ask. Just try to touch the hem of my garment. You try to touch me instead of asking me to touch you. Just try it. Just even the hem. Just give it a shot. <laughs> Amen. We're done here. Lord, we do love you. And Lord, our hearts are after you. They are. And, and we don't want to... We don't want to fool around. We don't want to waste time. We don't want to waste time, you know, uh, encouraging one another's flesh. We want you. And that's just, that's just the bottom line in our hearts. We want you. And we believe that the Holy Spirit is going to do that, and he's so faithful. And so we just ask you, Lord, to allow the Holy Spirit not only to reveal Christ, but to convict us of sin, and many times the sin is that which is in conflict with Christ crucified. Our flesh, our flesh, standing in the way, standing in the door, covering the door so we can't see the door. And all we get is an encouragement to our flesh, and we can't stand it. You can't stand it. And if, our, if, we're, if, if what's great to us is that we love you, then we won't be able to stand it either. Father, we just thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. If you, again, same situation. If you want to just pray for a few minutes, feel free to do that. If you need to go on home, do that. And we're good. Bless you.